but I am seven years of undergrad, so I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so I was here from 99 to 2002. Um, my degree is in health education, concentration in health and development. And um, you know, long story short, I worked in the Syracuse area for three years, commercial business setting, corporate business setting. I moved to Connecticut um, with, a, with a good friend of mine, Eric Cressy. Um, he and I worked in the gym together for a year, moved to Boston, and we opened up Crescent Performance. So are you familiar with Crescent Performance or kind of the clientele that we deal with there? Um, we deal with a lot of athletes. Just to give you a quick breakdown of the numbers, 90% of our clients at the facility are athletes, and 90% of them are baseball players. So we just finished our, like right now it's kind of a quiet time here. Baseball season just started. We had roughly 100 Why don't you still my knees? Like, it's just, I can't, my knees can't handle the squat. I'm like, what's wrong with my knees? Why, why can't do it? And of course, Dan and I are meeting with coach. He is, and any coach is going to be inquisitive. It's like, okay, let's, let's see. I'm applying the wall. There's a bar. Let's see you do it. And so Dan John watching watching squat and he's like, son, squat on the bottom of your knees. What you're doing is bothering your knees. Like okay, you walk, walk. that is not a squat. That is not a proper way to squat. Um, so you know, just to kind of throw out some studies, this is an old study back in 2001, but I still feel this is this is the study that I always kind of go to whenever someone tells me that you know, squatting deep is, is bad or it's unsafe. Hear that a lot. Like you always don't squat below parallel, it's you know, back in the knee. Well, what do you do when you go to the bathroom? And that's usually my 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 witty response. So I might say it more, I might use worse words than that, but I just say, well, what, what squat do you, you squat below parallel when you go to the bathroom? Like how so is that is that all of a sudden bad for me? But all of a sudden when we put a barbell on our back, the world, oh my god, it's what are you doing? Like it's just it, it just boggles my mind what some people but this is a study where it said there was no discernible difference between 70, 90, or 100 degrees of knee flexion with regards to the telephone joint reaction force and joint stress. So basically saying that the difference between squatting to this depth and squatting below parallel, there, there was no difference as far as joint stress, as long as, as, long as the pattern was correct. Does that make sense? And that's a very easy study that I like to point people towards. Like, no, squatting knee is not bad. It's just how you're, you're a shitty coach. You know, it's just what it comes down to. But, so to answer the question, is squatting deep or below parallel bad for your knees? No. Again, it is. It, kind of, it, it does depend. But, you know, that is going to be kind of our end game as far as getting people to that, to that um, point. Um, and this, this is a very rudimentary, I wouldn't say argument, but. Um, you know, as far as our ACL and our PC, whoops, sorry, I can't go back to that. Um, what we'll do with <laughs> So, as far as our ACL, PCL, LCL, MCL, you know, they, they protect their, they, they're, they're good at protecting the knees. Like, assuming that you're, you're moving well and you're strong, like, they'll, they'll protect the knee just fine. Like, you know, and honestly, I've, I've seen some people make the argument that where the knee is weak is when only go to parallel and stop and reverse the action. So, you know, and, but as far as like how the those ligaments are interacting in the, in the joint itself, you know, as going into deeper complexion and whatnot, they we aren't these delicate flowers. Like, you know, assuming that your pattern is clean, um, you know, the appropriate progressions, you're coaching your clients and athletes well, um, train them, like squat them. Just, that that's your job as a coach and as, as a trainer. Make sure that, I mean, I'm sure I wasn't in here for John Scandon because I was doing my own, but I guarantee if you watch him coach, like he is, he, he's like a, he's all over the place, like a, like a lot of pain. So like when I'm coaching a squat, like I'm standing from the side, I'm standing behind the person, and you know, I'm being non creepy and putting my hands on them and making sure they're in the right position. Um, I call it Play Doh coaching, I'm just kind of position people in the positions I want them. Um, but if you're coaching people well and you're on top of them, you're coaching at 90 degree angles, if you don't just want to stand there here and watch somebody squat, because then you're not seeing what their knees are doing, you're not seeing what their back is doing, you want to stand by in here, are they in the proper depth? You want, you want to be covering them all over the place. Like I'm, I'm down in people's spaces, like in front of them, I'm, I'm tugging on their knees, they probably think I'm a weirdo, but. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, so if you're, if, if you're coaching your clients well, um, that, that's half the battle right there. It's, it's all about technique. Like one of my biggest pet peeves as a coach and as a trainer is watching other coaches and trainers not do their job. 
correctly typing. You know, again, going back to our the stuff we did as a as a, as a, as a hands-on. You know, if, if, if someone has a horrible wider shoulder, well, the, the bench pressing their elbows out, they have, they, they're not using a good arch. You know, it just comes down to to me, your job as a coach. You know, like if I walk into a, a gym, I don't know what you guys are. I'm a coach, right? I can't help but observe. Like I, when, even when I travel and I go to other commercial gyms, you know, my girlfriend's father lives in Texas, her mom lives in Florida. So whenever we go visit, we, we obviously go to other gyms and train. And you know, I put my headphones on, I mind my own business. I'm not one of those people that's like, this is no one no, no business. But I am observing more. And I'll give most people the benefit of the doubt. Like most people, I, I can tell maybe on one hand, the number of times I've walked into a commercial gym and seen somebody training on their own, and like, wow, that guy's that's a good looking squat. Like, I, I, it doesn't happen that often. You know, where, and, and honestly, I don't care. Like most people don't know any better. They're just they're they're doing the best they can. And like, you know, we're not there to toss stones and throw judgment at them. They're doing the best they can. But where it becomes a big touchy for me is when they're with their coach, and it doesn't. It just makes it, 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 it it's not a good looking squat. Like, Knees are caving in, they're bending over, and I can't remember what close to that, and you're doing way too much weight. You know, and I, I've seen like the squats look like this, and then they're tacking on more weight for the next step. I'm just like, I just want to like grab a chair and sit down and watch. So I just love like, <laughs> <laughs> But but you guys want to tell me, do you notice that too? Like if you are you guys just as observant? That's I mean and, and I'm not I'm not trying to stick my nose in the air like, oh we're just an idiot, like what's that guy doing? But it, that is a huge touching point. It, it comes down to technique. Like you need to be more hands on with coach. And we'll get to a lot of a few videos that are going to show that. You know, and just to talk about assessment to a degree, this is these are the next few slides of what I had last year and I do quite a bit. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a canned response, it's a canned statement. I've said it, Eric said it, Bill Hartman said it. I think everyone who's ever written anything on assessment has said it, but if you're not assessing, you're guessing. And honestly, I don't care how you assess people or what you assess people with. Some people are FMS guys, some people are NASM. I don't care, it's all good. It's, it's a screen. The assessment is a screen. As I was telling the group earlier in the breakout session, your assessment, whatever, whatever it is and however you organize it, is for them to prove to you that they can do stuff and not, and not like, make your eyes be. I use that term all the time. But, um, you know, I want to see like how well they have a squat right. I want to see how well they're able to get their arms above their head. Like if someone walks in and they're here, they're not going to be doing any snatches anytime soon. Like, like I can't tell you how many times people walk in. Hey, what can I wear to press? <laughs> never, ever. You're never going to do another wear press again. Please stop asking me. Um, but it's, again, it, it, the whole assessment process is to for them to prove to you that they can do stuff. Right. So again, it's. Where, where their starting point is as far as like what depth of variation they're going to start with. Like, if someone has poor pain mobility, hip mobility, they're hypotic, they just they, they move like a thin man. I'm certainly not going to start them off on day one doing some empty deadlifts. But they are going to deadlift, but what would be a good variation to start them off on? Just to throw it out there. Crap bar would be excellent. The suitcase deadlifts, I mean, it might be as, as, you know, we might have to regress things to the point where just teaching them a, a hip hinge pattern. You know, pushing their butt back to the wall just to learn a proper hip hinge in general, making sure they're keeping the spine all time and all the easy pipe tricks. You know, that that that, that guy. Um, you know, the, it's, it's a screen. The assessment is a screen, you're getting information, and it's just for them to prove you that they 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 can find out to do so. You know, it's not the objective isn't for them to sit there and make them feel bad. No, you're not gonna. You don't have like this checklist. Oh, can you do that? You're walking thin on that. Why are you here? Um, like you don't want to make them feel like they're leaving the session. Oh man, you know, that that's not the objective of the assessment. You know, you, you can't jump. You're helping them find you feel fine. They're crushing it. And then this, it might be as a matter of having them do a, a slow eccentric goblet squat while they're maintaining spine position all the whole time. A lot of it's gonna be a motor control. Never, you're never, I mean, not to mention, too, like, if for some people, what, what's affecting the part of their, is their, their hip anatomy. You know, some people have wide hips or narrow hips. I mean, where the, where the femoral head sits in the acetabulum, 
you're not, you're not, you're not going to fix that in the post. Like, that's our anatomy. You have to respect people's anatomy. If you don't respect people's anatomy, that's something you're not going to fix. Does that, does that make sense? So you, 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 to some degree, like, some people, again, they're, they, they tuck under, they might always tuck under, you're never going to fix that. But, but taking that out of the equation, because I'm certainly, I'm not on the board, I'm not an expert in this. Oh, yeah, you got you to gotta be best to tackle. I'm like, remember? I, mean, I don't know. But, but certainly, it's like teaching them what a mutual spine is and helping them crush that is going to bring more than it's going to help. You know, addressing core stability is going to come into play. Um, and of course, the angels, too. So if you look at, um, you know, numbers will, will change a little bit depending on what you read. But you generally need about 15 to 20 degrees of angle force deflection in order to do a good squat, deep squat or a line pattern. So if someone's squatting, and they go, they get down here, and it's like, okay, okay I have no more dorsal selection. You know, they're they're going to get down there some way. It's just the body going to compensate to do it, and that's why people like wearing you know, the heel lift or the weightlifting shoes, and that's fine. But just understand that it is a band aid. It's not going to fix the issue. And you just got to adjust the lift to the lifter, and that's one of the great things why I love like deadlift so much. Like the deadlift is such an easy lift to modify to fit the needs of that lifter. Right, if I have to go trap hard that one, it's fine. Like it's, if someone does have poor ankle mobility or poor hip mobility, and it's really hard for them to get down to the bar properly, you know, without them looking like this, okay, let's put them in the middle so their center of gravity is different and the handle for higher, so I can get them in a successful position and groove and, and grease that, that hip hinge pattern. You know, and then eventually, yeah, we might get the whatever, but you know, the same thing with a squat, it's very easy to modify the squat, the speed of the squat, to fit into the lifter, whether it's going to go goblet squat, or it's going to go front squat. You know, but, you know, I'm using specialty bars, I'm not allowed to be adapted to it, but you know, if someone lacks, you know, as an option in next rotation, they have poor deep front mobility, if they need to go barbell back squat, it's going to be problematic. But again, they're going to build legs on the shoulder. But using a safety squat bar or a giant keeper bar, they have access to it. It's a great way to just be able to look at it. Um, teaching neutral spine. So we all know the PVC trick, right? So take a PVC stick, there's three points of contact, back of the head, middle of the scaps, and the sabrum. You're just having them hold that position, and they're, they're, they're hinging back, and they're maintaining points of contact on those three points. Anytime they lose contact, it's an immediate appropriate set of feedback to them. As far as like, okay, oh, I lost contact with my head, or I lost contact with my sacrum. You know, it's like the stick will give them feedback, and that's the one on the right, of course, and there's, there's one on the other right hand of the video. But that's a, a very easy drill. There's, there's numerous times where I'll, I'll do that drill, and then, okay, let's, let's take it and go over and let's, let's do some deadlifts, so let's do a squat, so we can bring that, that motor pattern while we work. You know, the cat cam one, we do all the cat cam ones. I don't know how the cat cam, but I really need one. Do a lot. But the cat cam is basically, a lot of times too, like if someone, if I'm pushing a deadlift, for example, or a squat, especially in session one, like I don't, I don't like to coach deep one for that I know it's not counterintuitive, but if I'm doing a trap or deadlift, for example, um, or a front squat, whatever, I'll just get this bar, I want to see what you do. Like, of course, I'm going to make sure that I'm not, I'm not putting 300 pounds in the bar, of course. But I'm going to be like, I just want to see how you set yourself up, do three reps, let me, just let me see what you're doing. You know, I don't want to say anything to him. You know, and then, you know, you can't, and a lot of times, I mean, they're here, you can't say, arch your back, arch your back, arch your back. I mean, they're not like, what, what, what? They don't know the terms. Like, it's funny, I mean, as, as smart as Eric is, and believe me, he's a really guy, watching him talk to a 13 year old kid, like, the kid is like last over. Does that mean more or what? And Eric's like using these big words, and like, at the time, adults understand what he's saying, let alone a 13 year old kid. Um, but, if, like, if you're working with a client, and you're, you're down there, like, oh, get your chest up, you just arch your back, arch your back, but they don't know what it means. You know, so they might, they just don't know. They don't have a feel for what it means to have a quote unquote neutral spine. So a really simple drill that I'll use is the cat camel drill, where it's like, okay, get down, get down on your hands and knees, okay, round your back. Okay, that's what I don't want. I don't want you to do this when you're standing up for the other. I don't want you to do this when you're squatting. Now arch 
your back to these neutral ones here. That's what I want you to feel. This is what I don't want, that's what I want. Right? And then they go, oh, now I get it. And then they walk over to the bar. So like they, they kind of get it. Does that make sense? So that's a very easy drill that you can do to help people learn what a neutral spine looks like. If you say neutral spine to somebody, they're going to think like this thing. They're going to be like, this whole neutral spine. Right? So that, that's just a very easy drill with a coach you can use just to help people find, okay, that's what I don't want. you got to teach them what you don't want and what you do want. It's like, it's just like teaching a dog how to poop on the rug. Right? No, don't feel the I'm trying really hard not to swear about that. <laughs> Alright, so, of course, to address any T spine mobility stuff, we're going to do T spine mobility drills. Um, um, with the one on the left, it's just me holding a stick, just so I don't go in internal rotation, so I'm holding the stick to prevent me from holding out that abdominal space, so I'm holding the stick. And I'm just basically leaning back to my shoulder, to my ankles, and coming back forward. So I'm just I'm getting a little shoulder flex, I'm getting a little lap length. I'm trying to work on, on uh, you know, extending my spine a little bit. And sideline windmill is just basically laying on my side and I'm trying to hold this on. And there's videos of this that you go to YouTube channel. Or just Google. If you just Google sideline windmill, my hand is just enough to hide that in the door. Yoga flex, or yoga complex, is just, I mean, it's simple. Like, I can have someone do a Spider Man, so they, they go into the Spider Man position and stand up. There's a whole bunch of drills that you can do there. So, I mean, there's a million and one T-spine drills. You can apply to their extension rotations. And there, there's, there's a million of them. So, you know, you can easily do one to Google. Rock that kind of adductor stretch. So this is one where you know, I might just get in the seat, get to an adductor stretch, sit back, drop down to my, drop down to my um, forearm to someone who's very extended to kind of take the lower back out of the equation. And just kind of go into the extension. Right, so these are simple drills we can do to help open up that on the back. And, and we're going to obviously address ankles. So whether it's, like I'm not spending 30 minutes just addressing some of these ankles. You know, we do need to train. So whether it's part of an extended warm-up, whether it's a filler, so in between such as flat and down, but you can go over the quality of the drills you can do. You know, you can need a plate so you can do ankle mobility drills there. You know, stand the reason that many people out of those cement blocks they have their shoes. And you can improve the ankle mobility, then you can learn to use the small and the physical muscles of the body and your feet. But that's going to help them as far as addressing that front number we talked about earlier. Well, you can. That's how many of I've done that. I reference the cement blocks for shoes, and, but you probably don't know some of them all the time. But we want to minimize, and this sounds pretty, it, it sounds very simple. But think about how often you are in spine flex. When you sleep in bed and the covers are covering your feet, what are, you, what are your feet doing? They're, they're, they're plantar flexing their shoulders. 